So I talked about making other stringed instruments from this sound. And one of my favorite stringed instruments is the eru, which is a Chinese spike fiddle with a very famous sound to it, very beautiful sound. And acoustically, it's not going to be that difficult to synthesize. We can basically just use this cello sound that we made, some minor modifications. Uh, I think I just changed the filter cutoffs a little bit, reduced the brightness at the high end of the pressure curve. And of course, because I have a instrument with 200 keys on it, we're going to have a much wider range than a real Eru. But the thing is, it's not so much a matter of sound design as uh, the performer's skill. So, the area has two strings, and the bow goes between them, so you can only play one at a time. And the strings are also, they're both fretted with, um, you stop both the strings with the same finger, because they're very close to each other. And you're only playing one note at a time. And the strings are lifted from the neck to the degree that you don't want to press the string to the neck in order to stop the note. You just stop it with your finger against the air. And that does a couple things. It produces some wild harmonics, and it also gives you an extreme amount of flexibility in pushing that string around, because you're not going to run into the uh, to any sort of fretboard. And this will give you a, this will let you play some pretty huge vibrato. And it sounds very natural because you're just working against the tension of the string. And it's a very, very beautiful sound and very difficult to do on the instrument at least. I don't know about other MPE controllers, but I would imagine it's the same. So it's easy enough to do a, a narrow vibrato on the instrument. Because there I'm just holding my finger and wiggling it back and forth. But to do these wide vibratos, you actually have to slide your finger. And that's much harder to control and much harder to make it sound pleasant in any way. So if you want to sound like an error, you have to be able to do that. I haven't figured it out yet. I, I think mine still sounds kind of nasty. Theoretically, it's doable. And if you can play an Eru well, that's one of the most wonderful things. Oh yeah, I have to mention, you might think you can trick this by changing your pitch bend range so that you can get that wide vibrato with just the wiggle. 
but the playing style also involves a whole lot of glissando. And if you uh, and if you change your pitch bend interval, then your notes will not fall in the right place, and you're going to sound terrible. But if you can do it well, it's really one of the most beautiful and emotional sounds in the world. A skilled arrowist can make a grown man cry with nothing more than a supermarket jingle. Now, I'm just noodling around on a scale here. If I were playing an actual song on a real Eru, and I was very, very good at it, you would be weeping. They hold this festival. It's a... Uh, they don't hold it every year. It's kind of a once every 50 years thing. Because it's uh, it's it's just it's very overwhelming. And what they'll do is they'll gather all the best eruists. I don't know if that's the right word, honestly, but all the best eru performers from all the land. And then they'll gather all the most stoic and detached and unmovable sages from all the land. This guy's with extraordinary control over their emotions. And they have a pedestal on which the performer sits. And this is set in the middle of a watertight basin about 30 feet in diameter. And the sages will all gather around and they'll sit on stools overlooking the basin. And then they will lean their heads over the edge while the arrowist plays. And the performer will play a medley of the 19 most inane and insipid used car dealership jingles that have been gathered from all across the world. And at the end of the performance, the, uh, the president of the ceremony will come over to the basin with a yardstick and dip it in and measure how deep the tears are. And that will be that performer's score. 
And then they take like a 20 minute break, half hour break. And the uh, new performer comes up to the pedestal and the sages go off. They hydrate the sages and drain the basin. And then they do it all over again. And then at the end of the day, you know, they compare the scores and whoever has produced the most tears is the winner. And then the, um, at that point, all of the finalists are executed because they, they just wield too much power. And I know that sounds harsh, but you have to, you have to think about it because like if one of these people gets on TikTok with a cover of that song that they play in Futurama in the episode with Fry's dog. You could just flood an entire province. 